uh, senior software engineer and uh, 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 about five years I was not only software developer but also a uh, solution architect on a small company on startups mostly and have some experience in um, non-traditional uh, non uh, mobile applications and mobile solutions. So my, uh, my speech will not be specific for some pl uh, platform as it usually happens, and I will not show you any code. Sorry about this. This will be about communication layer. So what uh, uh, the communication is not what uh, mobile developers use uh, cho choose. Um, mostly, uh, backend developers provide us with uh, uh, communication API, and we usually use the API that we already have um, from the server side. But sometimes we can ask them to make some changes or uh, make something for us. Uh, but uh, it's not the common practice. Uh, or, no, sometimes we have not only common practice. Uh, let's think about uh, what, what, what kind of communication layers do we have? And I will explain you why I decided to speak about this. So which, which type of communication protocols we have? Uh, it's uh, common for us, uh, client-server communication protocol. Uh, when we have a server and uh, all devices communicated only with server, a uh, client can initialize connection, server will not initialize connection. Uh, and uh, it's usually uh, single direction communication. What does it mean? It means that we send request and server send response. We do not have uh, backward uh, information from the server. Uh, it's common way. But uh, it also could be uh, socket communication. In, in this case, we will have uh, a ping from the server. And uh, uh, also, we have a push on mobile. Uh, the next communication uh, type is same rank. Uh, when applications, uh, when, uh, some applications connect to each other without server, uh, all of them have the same uh, rank uh, on the communication. Uh, and uh, each one can establish connection. And usually this is both direction communication. Uh, so when we do we have this? Uh, as you remember, we have a Skype. And usually it's client-server communication on it. Uh, but most of all should uh, possibly know that uh, on video calls on or in some cases Skype uh, establish peer-to-peer -peer connection if it's uh, possible and they use a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, for communication. It's more secure and uh, it's faster and you shouldn't have huge servers for this. Uh, some top, uh, and uh, also communication protocols uh, can be different uh, with uh, topology. Uh, start topology when everyone connects to the server. It's, as we spoke before, client server. It also could be mesh when any can connect to any. Uh, and uh, uh, this type of protocol usually used for peer-to-peer -peer communications. But in some cases, we have a limitations of number of connections. And in this case, we should use another topology uh, like tree, uh, tree protocol. Uh, so we have a branches uh, and each device can connect to only to two devices and uh, it's called like branches. And uh, in this, um, and, and uh, communication in this case, a bit harder than with regular client server or with regular mesh protocol. So you do not have cycles. So any uh, in case we broke some connection here, uh, we will lose uh, all the branch. Uh, when we have a mesh protocol, I will go back to the uh, previous slide. You can see that we, ca uh, we have 
a cycle here. And in case we lose, for example, this connection, connection uh, can connect we will will still have possibility to connect to, in, to bring data to any device. In this case, uh, in case we uh, broke th this connection, uh, communication between this branch and this branch will uh, will disappear. Uh, also, we have a bus. Um, most of us use Wi-Fi, and uh, almost nobody think that we use bus communication protocol. Uh, bus communication. It means that everyone can hear every everybody. Uh, but uh, only good gentlemen uh, read their data. Uh, to prevent bad gentlemen read uh, uh, enemy data, we have encryption between <laughs> encryption for connection. But if you use not secure Wi-Fi, uh, anyone on this Wi-Fi can get your packages and uh, get uh, all data that you have. This type of communication is really good. Uh, uh, this type of topology is really good uh, because uh, in this case, uh, we can establish broadcast uh, uh, broadcast communication when some device uh, can tell everybody uh, that here available or something like this. Uh, example for this is uh, uh, when we're scanning on Windows, uh, for file share, uh, each Windows device uh, tell, tells everybody that, okay, I have a share, here is my name. And only after established connection, you can get some information. Uh, but you tell me that, oh, it's not mobile. For mobile, the same, when, but on another way. Uh, when we have a Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi is broadcasting that. I, I'm Wi-Fi, uh, I have such uh, type of uh, um, security and uh, uh, such name. Also, the same for BLE. Uh, we have advertisement on BLE. Uh, when uh, each device that advertises us, uh, months in period, tells us in broadcast that here I am, here is my information. Data structure. Uh, when we transfer data through any of communication layer, uh, we need to step up and, uh, and decide which kind of data structure we will use. And mostly we use text type. It's HTTP protocol, it's uh, hypertext protocol. Uh, but, uh, and for uh, better uh, developer experience, we use JSON or XML as data format. Why, why it's good? Uh, because it's human readable, so it's easy to read and find out what's going on. Uh, but it's uh, heavy. Uh, uh, for example, to transfer uh, one byte, what you mean from uh, one to, to uh, 255, uh, we need to transfer uh, about 10 bytes uh, in regular JSON because we have a, uh, three bytes for value, uh, we have at least uh, uh, two um, comic cons and um, uh, um, some names, uh, some interruptions, and that's all. Uh, in real world, right now, it usually doesn't matter for us because uh, the transfer speed is really high, and uh, we do not think about oh, we have a limited connection. But there is some cases when we have this, and this cases is uh, IoT and BLE. Uh, why it's, uh, uh, why it's uh, matter for us? Because IoT devices is uh, cheap and slow, and it's hard for them to decrypt in JSONs and HTTP. Uh, so it's better to use uh, strong data types. With BLE situation a bit another, we can use strong device, but BLE has limit. Uh, until Android 10, uh, communication between iOS and Android uh, can be established only on regular BLE with uh, highest speed that we uh, can transfer. It was about three kilobytes per second. 
it's really slow for uh, transfer JSONs and something uh, something like this. Uh, in this case, we use strong data type. Uh, also, we have uh, VoIP communication, uh, and we do not need to increase amount of data in three times that we use with, when we use uh, by 64 connection uh, by by 64 encryption uh, because we we would like to transfer as much data as possible with highest speed with VoIP we usually use strong type communication st uh, strong binary type communication. Uh, do you, um, I was a bit hurry. Uh, do you have any questions? If yes, I can uh, stop here and we can answer some questions because. Uh, next, I will go to examples where we use something, and uh, in the end, I will uh, tell something about the project that I had before. No? Okay. I'm sure that if somebody would, would like, they raise the head. And, okay. Uh, let's go to examples. Uh, uh, here is some example uh, when we have different types of communications. BLA advertisement, as I told you before, it's a binary bus communication uh, when each device uh, can provide some data with, uh, uh, in a communication, um, uh, communication window. Uh, usually we, uh, we send uh, the information about device, uh, our IP address, and device name. Well, uh, communication uh, uh, is uh, uh, client uh, server uh, server communication. It's star communication, and usually, uh, usually uh, on BLE side, we can communicate to only two devices between each other. Uh, sometimes some BLE devices allow you to uh, connect uh, several several applications to single uh, health device, for example. So we can uh, read the data, data from it. Uh, until Android 10 uh, and uh, iOS, I believe 13, not 13, I'm not sure about uh, iOS version. Uh, we have limit uh, with uh, uh, about you know, 200 bytes per package. Uh, so this is the limitation that we uh, that we have. Uh, and uh, VoIP communication, uh, it could be mesh communication in some cases when uh, you have a broadcast messages uh, from one device to another. And usually they use um, HTTP for chat only, and uh, they use socket communication to communicate with each other uh, while uh, VoIP session. How to choose uh, uh, best fit protocols for your uh, specific situation? Uh, several que questions that I'm usually use uh, to find out what do I need. Mm. It uh, what data should uh, sh should and would data could be uh, transfer transferred between uh, each member of communication? What does it mean? Mm, uh, we have a privacy, and in case we have a one-to-one uh, -one chat, we cannot transfer any data um, and store any data that doesn't uh, uh, fit to this uh, to, to this specific user. So. It's privacy, and we cannot do this. In this case, we will use server uh, server communication type, for example. Uh, in some cases, we have a broadcast data, and it doesn't matter who gets this data because it's com uh, common available data. In some cases, uh, we cannot uh, uh, cannot uh, provide you with some data. Uh, uh, but do not transfer this data to another user. For example, when we use Wi-Fi, we send data to each uh, mob mobile device or each device that connects to this Wi-Fi right now. And in this case, we 
couldn't uh, store the data and we should encrypt this data. The second question was, what is the normal speed of uh, data transfer? As I mentioned before, uh, we have Wi-Fi that has almost no limit. Uh, we have uh, BLE uh, that has uh, about uh, three kilobytes per second uh, in the best case. Usually uh, when you have several connections, it's about one kilobytes per second. Uh, and also uh, we have GSM transfer. Uh, you tell me we have LTE. No, because with IOT, we do not have LTE. We usually have H in the best case. So it's really slow. Uh, so we uh, should think about this. Uh, and the third question, how we can establish connections. So do we know about all clients uh, or only client can connect to one to other? Uh, or um, uh, do we have a possibility to, uh, to establish connections between each other? For example, uh, usually we use internet connection, uh, but most of all, you know, most of us using not as a uh, as a communication layer. And we, in this case, we do not have possibility to have incoming connections. Usually uh, we, uh, we have port sharing, but it's not common in practice. So we do not have possibility to have incoming connections. In this case, uh, we limited this connectivity only sing, uh, one single direction communication would be established. Uh, let's take a look how these questions works. Uh, and uh, how we make a choice. Example, uh, first example is instant messenger. It's uh, the common situation when client asks us, please, ma uh, please make an instant messenger inside my application. Okay, what should we do? Uh, uh, the user should, uh, should have possibility to chat with other users through the internet connection. Users should um, have uh, contacts list users should have possibility to uh, use uh, uh, several devices. So you can log, log in on your Facebook or from your laptop and from your uh, iPhone, but you can, cannot log in with, uh, twice in iPhone, unfortunately, or Android. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, users should have this possibility. Mm, uh, we should uh, deliver message messages as fast as fast as possible we should uh, give possibility to call through the, our application and we should uh, guarantee uh, private uh, privacy of our communication uh, we have a small note here what should we have and we have a question that we should answer what should what data should uh, should and what data could be uh, could have other <clears throat> could have each member of communication. Each user should have only his own data. Uh, what's normal speed of data transfer that we have? I think that we shouldn't think about uh, speed less than five megabits per second. It's quite enough for our task, and it's uh, almost to the. Uh, uh, the lowest speed that we have in real world right now. Which member of co uh, communication can con uh, connect to each other? Uh, we can establish peer-to-peer -peer communications in some cases and in some cases, no. So uh, generally we think that we cannot establish peer-to-peer -peer communication in this case. And how sh uh, should our application looks like, uh, our communication layer looks like? Uh, the answer to the first question is each user sh should have only his own data. Uh, so we limit it uh, with uh, uh, server communication that server store this data or with mesh communication topology. Uh, so connection peer to peer between each user. Uh, with limit of uh, uh, five megabits per second, we are not limited with uh, type of uh, data structure that we can use. We can use as binary communication, as text communication. Uh, 
So that's good, good enough all of <laughs> all of types for us. Uh, we limited in peer-to-peer uh, -peer communications because user uh, can use not. In this case, mesh is not our choice. Uh, and uh, some notes. Uh, 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 YP usually use binary communication. Uh, 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 <coughs> YP calls usually use binary communication and uh, chats and contact list usually use regular REST on the JSON, on JSON base or something like this. Uh, and also YP communication can use peer-to-peer -peer if this peer-to-peer -peer can be established. And we should notice about this. Uh, and one more thing that I do not put to the communication that we usually do in case of REST, we do not have uh, backward uh, notification about uh, new message income. So we should use uh, something like push notifications or uh, web sockets open it to the server side uh, to get uh, notification that we have new data. So start topology, server-based communication. Uh, JSON, XML, uh, and uh, binary la layer communication for YAP. Uh, what do we miss? Delivery messages <laughs> as fast as possible. I have mentioned about this uh, on the previous slide uh, that we should have some both directional communication or client, uh, from server com uh, server pin, uh, push communication uh, to our application as well. Uh, second uh, example uh, is <laughs> uh, not so common. It's BLE smart house when we control uh, some uh, actuators uh, using BLE. Uh, show what should we do? Implement uh, application that allows us to uh, read data from BLE sensor, control home actuators by BLE. Let's answer the questions that we have previously. Uh, what data could put and what data uh, should be transferred to each uh, members of communications? Here we have no limits because usually we read data and in case some actuator knows that you open another, it doesn't matter for us. Uh, what's the normal speed? As I mentioned before, usually we can uh, think about one kilobyte per second. Here, which members of communication, uh, which members of communications can, can connect to each other? Uh, only peer-to-peer -peer communication here, because only device, uh, only our mobile application can establish connection to the sensors and to the actuators, and uh, also we have possibility to broad to receive broadcast information from some sensors. Uh, possibly you know about uh, beacons, uh, their communication based on advertisement, then advertisement, advertise their ID and uh, some uh, time stamps uh, that allow us to find out how fast uh, signal comes to us. So this, uh, in this case, we can use this as well. So our choice should be uh, for scanning device, we should use uh, bus topology with binary protocol. Uh, why with binary protocol? Because advertisement is really limited and we cannot uh, uh, change it uh, in real time. So BLE communication, uh, BLE advertisement is usually uh, setting up for some period and it's transfer constant data for each session. So we cannot transfer a lot of that data. Uh, usually it's uh, almost 200 bytes package, uh, but most of this package is busy with uh, BLE service data. So we have about 60 bytes for our data. Uh, for reading and control, uh, we use start, start topology, uh, but in this case, our mobile device will be the center of the star. 
uh, and it will use binary protocol to connect to each uh, BLE uh, model that we have. Example three is um, the most hardest example as for me. Uh, before I start to explain it, I will tell you that uh, on my previous job, we have a solution that provide vo voice transfer through the BLE uh, and uh, chat and uh, uh, device location transfer as well. Um, so I think that this is the hardest task that I have in my uh, career to find out how we can do this and uh, hope we'll, and to be done this and that's why i'm trying to share some basic knowledge about this with you what should we implement let's implement uh, a regular instant messages chat uh, but group chat not instant messages group chat uh, we have a limitation here transfer data through the BLE. Uh, each user can connect to each other and receive all messages. So we have a, a, a history in, uh, uh, of all communication on each device. Uh, user should have highlighted and read messages. Why do we need this? Because uh, I, when we have a communication uh, through the internet, usually we have uh, all messages come at once, but with BLE, uh, when you connect to another device, you can get new messages that wasn't read by you, and then you should be, could, could be older than the last message that you have. Uh, we should have a small history. Uh, this limitation just uh, because communication layer, sorry, because of communication layer limitations, and we should uh, send uh, pictures here. Let's think about uh, what we can use for this type of communication. Now, for this application, uh, which type of communication we should use here and how we can implement this. Uh, uh, our, uh, let's answer our questionnaire. Uh, what data should uh, and what data could um, have each member of com communication? At, as we decided before, we have no limits here. Uh, what is normal speed of data transfer that we have? As I told you uh, uh, during the presentation and BLE practically we have about one kilobyte per second. Uh, which, mem uh, which member of communication can connect to each other? Uh, only peer-to-peer -peer communication for BLE. And we have a limited connection by three devices. And this is also practical knowledge. Uh, uh, usually, uh, they tell us that we can connect eight devices to a single device uh, because we have eight um, ports on the uh, eight um, Bluetooth port on device. Uh, but here we have a limitation. Uh, first of all, for BLE communication, we need to establish two connections uh, to uh, normal data transfer. It's from uh, uh, each device should establish connection to another device. Uh, in another case, we will be really limited with uh, uh, single direction transfer. And also, practically, when you have more than six connections established, uh, three outgoing, three incoming, uh, these connections is, are really non stable. So you cannot be sure that everything works good. So practically three connections is the, uh, the best thing that we can use here. What should be our solution here? Uh, for device scanning, we should use bus topology. Uh, we need to find out if uh, there is some devices in range that has our application on it and that we uh, can connect and uh, communicate with. Uh, for um, reading and uh, uh, for reading and uh, uh, writing the, uh, that data, we should have three topology uh, because we have limitation of three uh, three connections per device. Uh, for uh, history synchronization, 
it's better for us to use JSON, I think, because it's really easy to read and it allows us to have backwards compatibility. We shouldn't think about um, uh, the version versioning of um, uh, application that we have. Uh, but uh, we have a limitation of the speed. Uh, and in this case, uh, I advise to use uh, zip uh, on communication layer. Why zip? Be uh, because it's really fast. It's, open, it's uh, uh, integrated in all mobile platforms right now. So we can just use the zip uh, library and have it. It's, it's allow you to uh, compress stream. And for text data, it's uh, provided about 80% of um, compression. Uh, so in case you have one, uh, 100 bytes uh, of text, you will, it will be only 20 bytes for data transfer. Uh, I will describe you a bit uh, some ideas of protocols that I use or I advise uh, to increase, but uh, when we have a uh, communication uh, communication without push or we we'll keep alive um, all, always keep alive connections, we have we are really limited with batteries uh, because uh, Bluetooth and uh, Wi-Fi communication uh, use uh, energy really strong. So for uh, I advise uh, in this in this particular. Uh, case not to uh, have uh, a live connection but connect only when you have a data to uh, to, uh, to sync uh, how we can uh, figure this out we can use broadcast here i i believe that we will have this described later uh, so to figure out if we have devices uh, in range and uh, if we have some new data on some devices, we should use uh, broadcast uh, and CRC for, for message list. It, it could be any time, uh, type of hash here that we should put. And uh, in our particular space, uh, case that we implement, uh, we use um, like CRC uh, of uh, headers of messages. Uh, in, and in case they were different, we can establish connections, synchronize. And in this case, this uh, CRC become uh, equal, even if, uh, not even, but each, uh, after each uh, synchronization session. Uh, uh, and also what we need, we need to make uh, all devices unique identif identifier here. Uh, we can use any, but uh, uh, because we use binary dat data transfer, it's better to use uh, something like uh, integer or short in integer, uh, limited with uh, two bytes. I don't think that, I, I'm sure that it will be good enough uh, in case of this case. Uh, some protocol description that could be used here. Uh, we are limited, with, as I mentioned before, we are limited with uh, 160 bytes, about, uh, about 200 bytes. Uh, and should, what should we transfer on each package? It should be size of the package that we transfer. It should be type of this package because we can uh, transfer uh, image, JSON, or some request uh, from one de device to another. Uh, we should have identifier of the uh, package and we should have some version of uh, protocol because in case uh, we change binary protocol, we need to specify this its version uh, and be sure that they're equal or, or they're supported by both both of communication application uh, for fi uh, for file transfer uh, the package data could be uh, similar to this one uh, we should uh, transfer file ID identifier 
it's better than a transfer file name. Uh, we can uh, transfer file name in the se separate package, but uh, for each package, it's better to have file identifier uh, because it's small. Mm, two bytes will be uh, good enough for us. As we limit it uh, with two megabytes, we can use two bytes uh, of uh, two bytes for file size. Uh, also, we need um, uh, to specify the shift because we cannot transfer all, uh, all file in one pack, uh, in one request. Uh, we should divide it by uh, pieces and uh, send piece one by another, and uh, these pieces should be. Uh, enumerated uh, because you can get the pieces in one order in some case and you will not combine uh, them together anymore example of this uh, if you ask two different devices uh, for uh, same file and uh, both of them will start to transfer data to you and uh, the um, but Bluetooth communication doesn't have constant speed, so you can uh, get uh, some pieces, uh, some uh, some pieces from one dev uh, device. It will hang out uh, later from another one, and later the first one will start communicate together. And in, in to to be sure that you know, our file will be uh, combined together in the normal condition, we should have. Uh, the shifting of each piece that we have and uh, each piece should have the size uh, as we have uh, about uh, 140 uh, bytes left in our package it could be one byte uh, i will also show you some uh, optimization uh, it doesn't matter for this particular case uh, because we mm, uh, win only four bytes here but for audio transfer uh, it was uh, really important for us when we implement uh, audio transfer because in this case we can put uh, four pack you know, four pieces not three pack pieces in much in one package Mm, uh, and this increased speed because speed limited not in bytes but in packages so we have a pack, package per second speed so how we advise you uh, to uh, make optimization uh, anyway we should have file identifier we should have piece count so uh, we divide file for uh, equal pieces and uh, we have only p uh, uh, piece count and piece index in case uh, uh, I think that we have some uh, some corruption here. I will fix this later. Um, uh, why do uh, 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 why don't I transfer the size? Because size we can calculate from package size that we have on general package, as I mentioned. You three slides before we have size of package here so we can calculate it uh, by uh, minus four bytes we will get the size of data that we uh, um, that matter for us okay and uh, one more uh, case that we have a problem with uh, was data synchronization uh, because of uh, limits of connectivity we do not have possibility to synchronize data through the server we do not use internet and uh, uh, data could be divided between uh, devices so some devices would have one actual data, another device can have uh, another pieces of actual data. Uh, I will describe um, possible way to solve this issue uh, by message synchronization idea. Uh, uh, we use a local database that store next fields inside. It's uh, 
text uh, message of the text text message inside uh, it's uh, auto uh, uh, unit you know, for us it's device identifier attachment file uh, if it was type step uh, from device generator uh, it's important uh, because in case you change the time stamp uh, to the time step that you get this data uh, device that generate this data will think that uh, this is new data and will add it to its own data and uh, in this case we will have data duplication and uh, uh, problems with synchronization so uh, the timestamp that we store it's usually it's usually the timestamp of generate of uh, on the device that generate this data for us it's become like unique identifier and message you eat uh, why do we use message you eat this allows us to make a changes uh, so when you would like to uh, edit your message you can edit it store in new data uh, timestamp will be changed but message you, uh, you, uh, id will not be changed and in this case all devices can uh, replace uh, old message with a new one uh, to present user if uh, uh, this message was read it or not we will use uh, uh, is read it flag uh, on, only for local database it doesn't matter for other users only for uh, device this particular device user uh, as i mentioned before for history synchronization uh, uh, we should uh, we should use some key for this. So, uh, for example, we can use outer ID plus message ID and uh, combine array of this uh, like text array and calculate CRC of this. And this data will be presented uh, on the uh, broadcast data through the BLE and uh, by this data uh, each device will know how, uh, if they should connect and sync or not. I think that's all from my side. I'm not sure how fast I was. Oh, it's about 55 minutes, 45 minutes. Uh, do you have any questions or something that I missed? 